And then finally, let me come back to this, this, uh, this sort of overarching theme for this talk, this competition is for losers idea, which um, is always this provocative way to, to title things because we always think of the losers as the people who are not good at competing. We think of the losers as the people who are um, slow on the sports, on the track team in high school or who do a little bit less well on the standardized tests um, and don't get into the right schools. And so we always think of losers as people who can't compete. Um, and I want us to really rethink and, and revalue this and consider whether it's possible that competition itself um, is off, that we, we, we're sort of, it's not just the case that we don't understand this monopoly competition dichotomy intellectually. So that's what I've been talking about, why, why you wouldn't understand it intellectually because um, people lie about it, it's distorted. We have all these, uh, the history of innovation rationalizes what's happened in all these very, very strange ways. But I think it's more than just an intellectual blind spot. I think it's also a psychological blind spot where we find ourselves you know, very, very attracted to competition in, in one form or another. Um, we find it reassuring if other people do things. The word ape already in the time of Shakespeare meant both primate and imitate. Uh, and there is something about human nature that's deeply mimetic, imitative, ape-like, sheep-like, lemming-like, herd-like. Um, and it's this very, very problematic uh, thing that uh, we need to always think through and, and try to overcome. And, and there is always this question about um, competition um, as, as a form of validation where we, we go for things that lots of other people are going for. And um, it's not that there is wisdom in crowds. It's not when lots of people are trying to do something that that's proof of uh, it being valuable. I think it's when lots of people are trying to do something that is often, um, that is often proof of insanity. There are 20,000 people a year who move to Los Angeles to become movie stars. About 20 of them make it. Um, I think the Olympics are a little bit better because you have a, you know, um, you can sort of figure out pretty quickly whether you're good or not. So it's a, there's a little bit less of a dead weight loss to society. Um, you know, um, um, you know you're, you're, you're the sort of educational experience at a place, uh, the, the, the pre-Stanford educational experience, um, there's always sort of a non-competitive characterization where I think most of the people in this room had machine guns and they were competing with people with bows and arrows. So um, it wasn't exactly a parallel competition when you were in junior high school and high school. Um, there's always a question, does the tournament make sense as you keep going? And this is, uh, and so um, there is always this question, if people go on to grad school or postdoctoral uh, post educations, does the intensity of the competition really make sense? There's the, uh, the you know, classic uh, Henry Kissinger line that uh, um, describing his fellow faculty at, at Harvard that the, uh, um, the battles were so ferocious because the stakes were so small, describing sort of academia. And, um, and, and you sort of think on one level, this is a description of insanity. You know, why would people fight like crazy when the stakes are so small? But it's also, I think, simply a function of the logic of the situation. When it's really hard to differentiate yourself from other people, when the differences are, when the objective differences really are small, then uh, you have to uh, compete ferociously to maintain uh, a difference of one sort uh, or another um, that's often more imaginary than real. There's always sort of the, personal uh, version of this that I, I tell where um, you know, I was sort of hyper, hyper tracked. I, you know, my eighth grade junior high school yearbook, one of my friends wrote in, you know, I, I know you'll get into Stanford in four years as a, as a sophomore. I sort of went into, went to Stanford four years later, uh, at the end of high school, uh, went to Stanford Law School, uh, you know, ended up um, at a big law firm in uh, New York uh, where from the outside everybody wanted to get in, on the inside everybody wanted to leave. Um, and, and you had, um, and it was this very strange dynamic where after I uh, sort of realized this was maybe not the best idea, um, and I left after seven months and three days, you know, one of the people down the hall from me uh, told me, um, it's really reassuring to see you leave, Peter. I had no idea that it was possible to escape from Alcatraz, which of course, all you had to do was go out the front door and not come back. But, um, but so much of people's identities got wrapped up in, um, in winning uh, these competitions that uh, they somehow lost sight of what was important, what was valuable. Uh, you know, competition does make you better at whatever it is that you're competing on. Because when you're competing, you're um, comparing yourself with the people around you. You're figuring out how do I beat the people next to me? How do I do somewhat better at whatever it is they're doing? And you will get better at that thing. I'm not, I'm not questioning that, I'm not denying that. But, um, but it often comes at this tremendous price that uh, you stop asking some bigger questions about what's truly important and truly valuable. And so I would 
I would say that uh, don't always go through the tiny little door that everyone's trying to rush through. Uh, maybe go around the corner and go through the vast gate that no one's taking. Thank you very much.